Hi, I'm Penny. Um, <laughs> um, so today you guys are starting a new semester. We're going to be talking about top side controls and the rest of the things that are with you. And so, um, as is tradition, uh, the first class of the semester, we're going to lay out some conceptual underpinnings to how we're going to approach pretty much everything that we uh, show and uh, practice throughout the month. I'm going to start out noting two things. I think it's going to be practical, right? By a show of hands, I guess I should have asked you to sit down, but whatever. I'm going to do it. Um, by a show of hands, who had an easier time getting out their second round when you were able to start with the elbow to the floor versus the first round when you couldn't? Right? If I can get my elbow to the floor, then I can make a lot of different things happen inside control. Right? We, we look at it, we sort of reverse engineer the situation, meaning that if I'm here and he gets to the tip right it really kind of doesn't matter what he does with this top frame. He can use it if he has like a big bridge and just a big normal hip escape, right? He can use these to frame me out here. He can even use this hip frame to keep enough space to pull this underhook, start coming up to right here. There's a lot of different options that just this inside hip frame could afford me, or afford him rather, okay? Um, most of you that have trained with me have probably seen me demonstrate this, but this control of this arm is so critical on a mechanical level. Like, if I just have this, turn into me, please. Just that. That's enough to cycle, right? The other thing, let me scoot you back just a little bit, that I want to point out before I start getting into this stuff is, did you notice how when we did that first drill, easy it was for the bottom person to roll you over once your head went two inches forward, right? So. The reason why I go into all this to start with is because I feel like a lot of the things people prioritize in side control are fucking dumb, frankly. I think that there are a lot of things that big dudes can get away with because they're bigger and they're not super universal. A big common thing you see people doing is basically doing a lot of like riding into their opponent like this. And they're up on their toes and all this stuff. Now, I'm not saying there's a place for that, and we're going to talk about that in a second. But the point is, is like, if you're not a big dude, or if they're also a big dude, that sort of thing is not going to cut it when you're driving past their center line like that. Like frankly, when you're going, when your head starts drifting past the shoulder, you're putting yourself in risk. The other thing is, is you're not usually controlling this inside arm. Right? Once I'm here, he gets that elbow inside, now he can start making the recovery motions happen. Right? So, the two things I have to prioritize as far as my position here is I want to not have my weight going so far forward that I risk being re-rolled, and I want to control this inside arm so much that he can't bring that frame inside and start using it to recover. So, what I'm going to aim for here, you get your arms out just like here. Okay, a couple of parameters. One, I want my sternum to line up with his sternum, like we're making a T. Oh, coach, just say, you know, put your pressure on him like you're shy at. So, I'm going to be here, sternum on sternum, like as if, got it. All right, so that sense, guys? I want to take this arm, holster it in, and get my knee very close to his head. We're going to talk about alternative positions for this leg in a second, but we're going to start with knee close to the head. I want this other knee. Clamp down to his tip, so I should end up. You see this one? Should end up basically here. This knee prevents the regard. This knee prevents the double bone. Does that make sense, guys? Want my hips low? I'm going to grab the arm or grab the head with my arm, and then what I'm going to do for pressure is my uh, the hand of the arm that's under the head is going to go palm up. I'm going to feed my bottom three fingers into his arm. I don't want to feed my four uh, my index finger because when I do that, I get like a weird curve of my wrist, where it just allows me to keep natural line of my wrist. Here, okay? What I'm going to do is, let me move his arm out of the way, please. I'm going to move his shoulders back like I'm pulling a tablecloth out of the magician's trick, right? Boom. I'm going to slide my shoulder down to create the space between his jaw and my shoulder, then I'm going to come back and start putting pressure this way. Right? And that's not, I'm not really putting like a ton of weight, but we say it's three solid pressure, mm -hmm. move around please. Freeze out, right? I don't need to be driving all of my weight forward and risking any rerolls. I just, I'm not going to bring my pressure to him. I'm going to bring him to my pressure. You see how I'm using my shoulder to drive in there? I can even recover, slap my hands together if I want. 
He can get this form for you in the lay if he wants. They put the form in my face. It's like, I don't really care all that much. We're actually going to use that to our advantage. It's like in a perfect world. I have toes inside, and this is where I'm at. Okay? I have two alternative hip positions that I can use. Okay? What we have here with this scenario, with my both, knees, uh, both of my knees are in, is I have the maximum amount of mobility, probably the least amount of actual weight being put down on our foot. Right? Let me sit down again. Meaning that if I'm here, and let's just say, the position starts to collapse a little, he gets his frame in, whatever, he starts to maneuver. My transitions to other positions are very quick. I sacrifice a little bit of weight by doing that, but I keep myself able to adjust if the situation starts getting here. The second positioning that I can work, and this is going to be purely for positional control, is the leg that is over here, or close to the head, is going to sprawl back. Okay, so the ass down is a little heavier, right? The shoulder pressure is a little tighter. I want to rotate with the hand of a clock towards the head, so it should be harder to get that elbow inside. Not impossible, a little easier. But again, if I want to transition to a mount, for example, I'm going to have to end up coming back. And then our last one we'll uh, practice before we get to any finishes is uh, is the arm on the other side of the body. We're going to come across the hip. I'm going to get up on my toes and I'm going to start hold almost to a north down. That's probably the heaviest you say that, mm -hmm. right? Because the least mobile. This has the least amount of me being able to transition to other things, but it is the heaviest I can possibly be. Right? So I want to start out with just this, and then we're going to talk about uh, sort of the conceptual underpinning of how we're going to use that to get finishes. So if I grab, like, I guess Tom would be. So again, skydiving, sternum to sternum, right? My pressure is down. The pressure is not forward. My opponent's not here. My opponent is here, right? So, sternum to right? Collect, knees in tight, hips in full, right? Just to make it simple, it didn't see over here now. Back through the fingers going in the armpit. I'm going to pull his shoulder back in space, shift my shoulder down. You see how I made a little bit of space between my shoulder and his jaw? And I'm going to come back. Yeah, that's Tom, that's pretty unlucky. Mm -hmm. uh, I can connect my hand to the gable grip now and pull them in and then wedge that like I'm leveraging the pulling in of my hands to the driving of my shoulder to get some normal early pressure. This is our basic back and forth position. So I want to put a little bit more weight, like maybe I feel like he's doing a lot of bridging, so you do a lot of bridging, right? Sprawl back and block here. I want to still keep my knee close. If I feel like he's really getting here and I just want to settle the position, hand comes across, block this. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah? Right, so let's just partner out, take a couple minutes just to kind of play through those positions, and we're going to talk about using it for uh, catching the shoulder. All right, let's do it. One, two, three.